So, let's start. Number 9. The fish that lives inside active volcanoes. There is a species of fish called the Devil's Hole Pupfish, and it lives in one of the most extreme environments on Earth. Its entire world is a single water-filled cavern in Nevada, and that cavern sits above geothermal vents that heat the water to levels where normal fish would die. The oxygen levels are extremely low, the temperature is unstable, and the habitat is so small that scientists joke it is basically an aquarium built by nature and then set on hard mode. Yet the pupfish survives there, and no one fully understands how. The water is often warm enough to stress most aquatic life. Oxygen barely dissolves in it, so breathing should be a constant struggle. The cave is narrow and deep, and sunlight only reaches the surface for a few hours a day. Food does not float in from the outside world, and the ecosystem is so fragile that even small disturbances can cause major problems. Despite all this, the fish continue living in the dark blue depths, as if the environment is perfectly normal. Scientists have studied their biology for decades, and the fish keep surprising them. The pupfish can tolerate high temperatures that would kill related species, its cells handle low oxygen far better than expected, and its metabolism slows whenever conditions get dangerous. Instead of dying from stress, it shifts into survival mode, saving energy until the environment becomes stable again. This flexibility is one of the reasons it has survived in such an isolated and harsh place. And the strangest part is the habitat's age. Devil's Hole has existed for hundreds of thousands of years, cut off from lakes, rivers, and streams. Many scientists believe the pupfish became trapped there long ago and evolved in isolation. They adapted to every difficulty the environment threw at them. Heat, hunger, darkness, and a shrinking habitat. The pupfish shows that evolution will take any opportunity to keep life going, even if it has to do it in a place that barely qualifies as livable. Number 8. The Tiny Creatures That Survive the Vacuum of Space Tardigrades, also known as water bears, are microscopic creatures that look almost cartoonish under a microscope. But what they lack in size, they make up for in sheer absurd toughness. They can survive boiling heat, freezing cold, crushing pressures, and radiation that would turn a human into a pile of ash. Yet the most mind-blowing test of their durability came when scientists sent them into outer space, completely exposed to the vacuum, cosmic radiation, and unfiltered solar ultraviolet light. For almost any other living thing, this is an instant death sentence. For tardigrades, it was basically a field trip. In space, there is no air, no atmospheric pressure, and radiation so intense it can rip apart DNA molecules within seconds. But tardigrades survive by entering a state called a ton. In this form, their bodies curl into a dehydrated ball, metabolism drops to near zero, and all biological activity essentially pauses. Even their DNA, which is shattered by cosmic radiation, is protected by unique proteins that act like molecular bodyguards. When rehydrated back on Earth, they wake up, move around, and even reproduce as if nothing happened. Scientists have studied tardigrades for decades, and each new discovery makes them seem even stranger. They can endure extreme drought, survive being frozen for decades, and live through intense pressures deep under the ocean. The space experiment revealed that their durability extends far beyond Earth's natural extremes. This raises huge questions for astrobiology. If tiny creatures like tardigrades can survive the vacuum of space, then interplanetary travel via asteroids, comets, or planetary debris becomes slightly less impossible. Life could potentially hitch a ride between worlds, surviving conditions previously assumed to be totally lethal. The implications are staggering. Tardigrades show that multicellular life can endure situations where biologists once believed life would immediately fail. And perhaps the most terrifying thought is this. If tardigrades can survive the vacuum of space, we may not even recognize life when we see it on other planets. Number 7. The worms that live in scalding hydrothermal vents. Deep on the ocean floor, far below sunlight's reach, hydrothermal vents release superheated water, sometimes exceeding 350 degrees Celsius, filled with toxic chemicals and metals, most life would instantly die in these conditions, yet around these vents live giant tube worms, clams, and colonies of bacteria 
thriving in total darkness as if the universe just handed them a cheat code. The worms, some growing more than two meters long, have no mouth and no digestive system. Instead, they house symbiotic bacteria in their tissues. These bacteria convert poisonous chemicals from the vent water, such as hydrogen sulfide, into energy through a process called chemosynthesis. This allows the worms to survive without sunlight, relying entirely on chemical energy extracted from toxic water. Even stranger, the worm's blood carries oxygen while simultaneously binding hydrogen sulfide, which would normally poison most organisms. Their protective tubes shield them from the extreme heat and corrosive chemicals. Entire ecosystems thrive here, including crabs, shrimp, and other creatures that have evolved to live in this bizarre chemical stew. The vent communities challenge our understanding of life because they exist entirely independent of photosynthesis. These discoveries have huge implications for life elsewhere in the solar system. Moons like Europa and Enceladus have oceans beneath thick ice layers, possibly heated by tidal forces and containing chemical energy. If life can thrive around Earth's hydrothermal vents, it could exist in these alien oceans, in total darkness surviving entirely on chemistry rather than sunlight. Hydrothermal vent ecosystems remind us that life doesn't always follow the rules we think it does. It will find a way, even in places humans would call utterly impossible. Number six, the algae that lives trapped under 800 meters of ice. Under Antarctica's massive ice sheets, life should be impossible. Temperatures stay below freezing, pressure is crushing, sunlight never reaches the water, and nutrients are almost non-existent. Yet scientists drilling beneath the Ross ice shelf discovered pockets of liquid water containing living algae. These microscopic plants survive in conditions that seem completely hostile defying what we thought we knew about life's limits. The algae live in tiny brine channels, networks of salty water trapped inside the ice. The salt keeps the water from freezing, creating microhabitats where life can persist. The spaces are so small that a single organism could barely move, yet they survive. Slowly metabolizing and reproducing, their growth is glacially slow, sometimes taking months for one cell division, but that is enough to keep their population alive for centuries. Sunlight doesn't reach them, so traditional photosynthesis is impossible. Instead, these organisms use extremely efficient chemical processes to extract energy from trace minerals in the water. Their cells can recycle nutrients, surviving in an isolated, nearly closed ecosystem, they even withstand occasional temperature fluctuations and tiny bursts of oxygen or chemical changes showing a resilience that borders on absurd. This discovery is vital for astrobiology. Europa, Enceladus, and other icy moons might have oceans trapped beneath thick ice sheets just like Antarctica. If algae can survive in these dark, nutrient-poor pockets on Earth, it raises the possibility that life could exist in similar extreme conditions elsewhere. These tiny organisms prove that life is far more persistent and inventive than we often give it credit for. Number five, the bacteria that thrive in boiling acidic springs. In Yellowstone and other geothermal regions, some hot springs reach temperatures near boiling. Most life would be incinerated or chemically shredded in seconds. Yet extremophile bacteria, such as Sulfolobus species, thrive in these deadly pools, converting sulfur and other minerals into energy. They are living proof that life can flourish in ways humans barely understand. The water in these springs is brutal, high acidity can destroy cell walls, denature proteins, and break DNA. Temperatures alone are enough to cook most microbes, yet these bacteria continue normal biological functions. They produce specialized enzymes that remain stable at extreme heat and acidity. Their membranes are chemically resistant, and their proteins are structured to tolerate environments that would instantly kill almost any other organism. Essentially, their cells are molecular-level fortresses. What's even more remarkable is their ecological impact. These bacteria don't just survive, they alter the environment around them. 
By metabolizing sulfur compounds and other minerals, they produce gases and chemicals that create microhabitats for other organisms. Tiny ecosystems emerge in pools that would otherwise be completely lifeless. These bacteria essentially engineer their own survival zone, showing that life can adapt not just to endure, but to dominate extreme niches. Scientists study these microbes to better understand life's potential beyond Earth. Planets like Venus have surface conditions that are acidic and hot, and moons like Io experience constant volcanic activity. Extremophiles like these bacteria demonstrate that life doesn't require comfort. It can evolve biochemical tools to withstand, exploit, and even thrive in environments that seem entirely hostile. Their existence proves that life can survive in ways that appear impossible, and it challenges the very definition of a habitable environment. Number four, the microbes that eat plastics in the deep ocean. In the darkest depths of the Mariana Trench, nearly 11 kilometers below the ocean surface, life exists in ways that seem impossible. Here, pressures are so immense that humans would be crushed instantly. Temperatures hover just above freezing, and sunlight has never penetrated. Yet, among the extreme conditions, scientists have discovered bacteria that feed on the very plastic humans dump into the oceans. These microbes are thriving on humanity's careless mistakes, turning our trash into a bizarre feast. The bacteria metabolize synthetic polymers, breaking down plastics that would take centuries to decompose naturally. In essence, they are eating what we thought would be forever waste. Microplastics, which accumulate from bottles, packaging, and microfibers, become their energy source. They survive where no one expected life to exist, and they thrive in isolation, pressure, and near-freezing temperatures. They also withstand total darkness and extremely limited nutrients, relying entirely on these discarded polymers to power their metabolism. These microbes reproduce slowly but relentlessly, forming colonies that gradually convert plastic particles into biomass. The process isn't quick or dramatic, but it is effective. In the vast, barren trenches, these bacterial colonies are essentially turning human pollution into a sustainable ecosystem. It's darkly ironic, what we created as a problem meant to last forever becomes a resource for life that doesn't care about human intentions. The discovery has profound implications. For one, it suggests that life can adapt to use energy sources we consider artificial or non-organic. The bacteria challenge our understanding of ecosystems and the limits of adaptability. They may also hold the key to solving human-made environmental disasters. By studying how these microbes break down plastics, scientists hope to develop biotechnologies that could accelerate plastic decomposition on a larger scale. It's also a humbling reminder that life doesn't follow human rules. While we panic over waste, these microbes carry on quietly eating, reproducing, and surviving in a place humans can barely reach. The Mariana Trench, once thought of as a desolate graveyard of pressure and darkness, is instead a bizarre dining hall where human error fuels the persistence of life. It's nature's way of saying, you made a mess, I'll handle it, eventually. Number three, the deep sea isopods. Far below the sunlit ocean in crushing depths where pressure is enough to instantly pulverize a human body, live giant isopods, creatures that make most nightmares look tame. These enormous relatives of shrimp and pill bugs scuttle along the ocean floor, feeding on whatever drifts down from above. Their menu is largely dead and decaying animals slowly falling from the world above, which means meals are scarce and unpredictable. To survive, these isopods have adapted to a lifestyle of extreme patience. Some can go years without eating a single bite, conserving energy while waiting for the next corpse to descend. Their metabolism is so slow that a single meal might sustain them for months, and their reproduction is equally methodical, with females carrying eggs in protective pouches until conditions are favorable. Life here moves at a completely different rhythm from the world above. The darkness is absolute, broken only by the faintest bioluminescent flickers of other deep-sea creatures. Every movement must be precise. One wrong move and energy is wasted, or worse, a predator strikes. These isopods have grown enormous, their armor-like exoskeletons tough enough to endure pressures that would crush a submarine. What's uncanny is how alien they feel. 
To us, life in the deep ocean seems impossible, yet these creatures dominate a frozen, silent world humans cannot even visit without machinery. They are living proof that life will endure, adapt, and thrive even where humans would instantly perish. In this graveyard of the deep, existence is slow, patient, and relentless. Humanity may never fully comprehend the mechanics of this hidden, alien ecosystem, but the isopods don't care. They simply survive. Number two, the subterranean ants that thrive without light. Beneath deserts, forests, and mountains, entire civilizations exist out of human sight. Certain species of ants spend their entire lives underground, never seeing the sun. They excavate complex tunnel networks, spanning hundreds of meters in some cases, with chambers for nurseries, storage, and fungus farms. They never rely on sight, instead they navigate using pheromones, vibrations, and chemical signals communicating silently through the tunnels. These ants are meticulous engineers, their underground cities are ventilated, climate controlled by their activity, and protected from predators and environmental hazards. Colonies can last decades, sometimes outliving individual ants many times over. The workers maintain fungus gardens, cultivate food, and sustain the colony with precision. It's an entire ecosystem operating in secrecy, invisible to human eyes sustained by cooperation, instinct, and remarkable adaptability. Feeding ranges from fungus and stored seeds to small invertebrates they trap or scavenge. Their existence proves that life doesn't need sunlight, warmth, or even the comforts humans consider essential. Time passes differently underground, and life proceeds silently, efficiently, and ruthlessly. These ants have created a hidden world, a functioning civilization beneath the surface, in total isolation from the above world. Humans rarely notice them, and if we did, it would feel like intruding on another dimension. Their society is a darkly efficient, unseen empire of survival. It's a reminder that life can flourish anywhere, adapting in ways that seem impossible, patient, and quietly terrifying. The subterranean world exists entirely on its own terms, and these ants are the emperors of that hidden kingdom. Number one, the bacteria that live inside nuclear reactors. Inside nuclear reactors, the radiation levels are high enough to destroy DNA almost instantly. Humans exposed to that environment would not last long, yet a microbe called Dinococcus radiodurans survives in these conditions as if radiation is nothing more than background noise. It can handle doses thousands of times higher than what kills us, and instead of dying, it calmly repairs itself and keeps going. Scientists discovered it by accident. They tried to sterilize canned meat using massive amounts of radiation. Nothing should have survived the process, but the cans kept spoiling. When they opened one, they found this bright red bacterium living comfortably inside. The radiation used should have been lethal to every known organism, so the discovery confused everyone. It was like finding someone enjoying a picnic in the middle of a nuclear test site. Researchers later learned that the microbe keeps several copies of its DNA arranged in a tight structure. This helps control the damage when radiation breaks everything apart, but even that did not fully explain its resilience. One theory is that the bacterium originally evolved to survive extreme dryness, not radiation. Dry environments can damage DNA in similar ways, so its repair system became so efficient that it now survives nuclear-level destruction by accident. When its DNA does get shattered, the microbe rebuilds it with surprising accuracy. It uses specialized enzymes and strong antioxidants to protect itself, and it cleans up damage faster than almost any other organism on Earth. Because of this, scientists have even tested it in nuclear waste cleanup projects, and it still refuses to die. The existence of this microbe changes how we think about life in the universe. If something on Earth can survive radiation stronger than deep space, then life might exist in places we once thought were impossible. It shows that biology can adapt far beyond what we expect, and it reminds scientists that nature loves breaking its own rules. Thank you for watching and sticking till the end. We've got plenty more videos coming in the future. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them. See you in the next one.